Sup, Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, as you Chooms already know, I have been tied up with a lot of response videos going after DHT simps who are spreading misinformation about hair loss treatments. But I can only debunk so many rat studies before it gets both tedious and repetitive. So, it is time to get back to the hair loss witchery that I love the most, and I'm going to go over some exciting new treatments in the pipeline. That's because earlier this year, there was an announcement that a phase one clinical trial had been completed on a brand new hair loss treatment called PP405. The results of this phase one trial were presented at the national meeting of the American Academy of Dermatology in January of this year. Here is a slide from the meeting that I obtained from the Reddit post about the results. As you can see from the slide, in this study, the drug was found to be both safe and well tolerated. Hair growth was demonstrated at scalp concentrations of the drug of at least one micromole. The drug is is a topical medication and there were no detectable levels of the drug in the blood after it was applied. That's always a good thing when you want to avoid systemic side effects. It was also found that just once a day dosing was sufficient to cause hair growth. The third pane of the slide talks about the mechanism of the drug. So let me read from the press release from the company that makes PP405 Pelage Pharmaceuticals. Quote, there was a statistically significant increase in the KI67 signal compared to baseline after just seven days of 0.05% PP405 topical treatment. Evidence of a newly emerging hair germs, the hallmark of the telogen to antigen transition was also observed. The topical molecule also received positive formulation reviews from patients." Unquote. Okay, that's fascinating, but what does any of that mean? How does this drug actually work? It sounds like it has a completely different mechanism from other new hair loss drugs that target the androgen receptor, like pyrolutamide or GT20029. So let's dig a little deeper, Chims. So if we go to the Pelage website, we see this diagram here that claims that PP405 reactivates hair follicle stem cells. That would be a good thing, of course, because during the telogen resting phase of the hair follicle, dormant stem cells become reactivated, and that leads to a new antigen growth phase. But how does PP405 actually do this, you may wonder? Well, before the company did the phase one human study, they did some studies looking at hair follicles from human skin grown in the laboratory in a cell culture. What they found was, quote, single topical applications of 0.006% and 0.06% PP405 led to an increase in LDH activity in hair follicle stem cells within 24 hours. The LDH activity corresponded with a significant increase in KI67 signal in the hair bulge, indicating a proliferative response of the hair follicle stem cells. The findings demonstrated proof of mechanism in human explanted skin consistent with the results in animal models, unquote. So we're going to have to dig a little deeper to understand exactly what is going on here. What does LDH, which is the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase, have to do with stem cells? And what is this KI67 signal that they keep talking about here, Chums? Also, how does PP405 actually increase LDH activity? Well, the company website explains, quote, PP405 is a potent topical mitochondrial pyruvate carrier inhibitor that acts on the cellular metabolic pathway to upregulate lactate dehydrogenase, which stem cells are particularly sensitive to, resulting in their activation and hair growth." Unquote. So this doesn't sound like any other hair loss treatment I have ever heard about before in my life. What is the actual science behind it, though? First of all, here's the paper I found on the MPC, meaning the mitochondrial pyruvate carrier. So if you all remember your high school biology lessons, mitochondria, those are the structures inside of the cells that produce a lot of the energy for the cells. It's inside the mitochondria that the Krebs cycle, also known as the citric acid cycle, occurs. During the Krebs cycle, pyruvate is converted into ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate. This is the molecule inside the cells that stores energy. This whole process is called oxidative metabolism or aerobic metabolism because it requires oxygen. It produces the most energy of any process in the cells. It's the energy source we use for any type of exercise that lasts more than a few seconds, like running or cycling, for instance. The pyruvate 
is created from glucose outside of the mitochondria by a process called glycolysis, which is also called anaerobic metabolism because it doesn't require oxygen. It's the predominant energy source that we use for short bursts of explosive energy for sports like weightlifting or pole vaulting, for example. So, like I said, the pyruvate outside of the mitochondria has to get inside of the mitochondria somehow. This figure from the paper I already mentioned shows that the pyruvate enters using a two-step process. That's because the mitochondria have two membranes, an outer membrane and an inner membrane. The outer membrane is crossed through a voltage-dependent anion channel. The inner membrane is crossed via the MPC, which is the mitochondrial pyruvate carrier. So, if you recall, this mitochondrial pyruvate carrier is what PP405 inhibits. So, it's pretty damn important that this stuff doesn't go systemic because basically it could shut down the function of your mitochondria and your energy levels would absolutely plummet. But it seems strange that something that could wipe out the function of your mitochondria could be a hair growth stimulant. So how do we make sense of all this, Jims? Well, fortunately, I found the basic research that is behind PP405 because unfortunately, the Pelage website is very stingy when it comes to sharing information on PP405, probably because it's a trade secret of the company. But this paper explains the rationale behind the drug. It describes the development of several compounds that inhibit the mitochondrial pyruvate carrier, and I'm sure one of these compounds is what later became known as PP405. Fortunately, it describes what the mitochondrial pyruvate carrier has to do with hair growth. The authors of the study note that some basic research showed that increasing levels of lactate dehydrogenase, also known as LDH, can activate hair follicle stem cells. It turns out that if you inhibit the mitochondrial pyruvate carrier with a drug, that ends up leading to increased increased pyruvate levels outside of the mitochondria. This causes stimulation of the LDH enzyme in order to convert the pyruvate into lactate. This increased LDH then stimulates the hair follicle cells to reactivate and start growing. So in the study, the investigators tested several MPC blockers and identified several compounds that induce good hair regrowth in mice. Like I said, I'm sure one of these compounds is what eventually became PP405. So this all makes sense to me, except there is still one little mystery. What is this KI-67 that was mentioned in the PP405 press release? Well, KI-67, what it is, it is a protein that only appears during cell proliferation, so it is a marker of stem cell activation. So to summarize all of this data, PP405 is a molecule that inhibits the function of the mitochondrial pyruvate carrier. This results in increased activity of the lactate dehydrogenase enzyme, and this is a stimulant to reactivate hair follicle stem cells, which then leads to hair regrowth, or at least that's the theory. The good news, though, is that the phase one trial was evidently a success. So as expected, the drug is now entering phase two clinical trials. Here is the web page for the phase two trial, and here's what they actually plan to do. The researchers, they will recruit 60 men or women with androgenic alopecia. Men are required to have a Norwood Hamilton score of type three to type five. Females must have a Savin score of I2, I3, or I4. So if you haven't heard of the Savin scale, the Savin score is basically just a modification of the Ludwig scale that is used to grade androgenic alopecia in women. It's almost identical. So the study will compare 0.05% PP405 gel with a placebo. Unfortunately, it looks like it is going to be a very short study that will only last for 28 days. That really seems like it is too short of a study period to evaluate something like hair growth. But the goal of the study is to look at how well the topical gel is tolerated and also to make sure there is no systemic absorption, which like I said, could be very problematic. So hopefully, after this phase two study is complete, the company will then proceed to do some longer term studies with an endpoint of looking at viable hair regrowth and maintenance. So this is a treatment that is still definitely in its neonatal stage, and it is probably going to be at least a few years before it sees the light of day, if it ever sees the light of day at all. Nevertheless, I still felt it was very important to bring attention to this treatment, since it seems to work through an entirely new type of drug mechanism that has nothing at all to do with DHT or even any of DHT's downstream effects like the wind pathway. I don't think it will replace 5-air inhibitors like finasteride and dutasteride, but I do still think it could turn out to be an effective hair growth stimulant like minoxidil, possibly even better than minoxidil, which of course is badly needed because frankly, it is ridiculous that topical minoxidil is still the most effective growth stimulant that we have, even though it has been on the market since 1988.
So even if it isn't as potent as minoxidil though, it still looks like it could very well likely be stacked with minoxidil since it works through a completely different mechanism. So to be honest, PP405 isn't the upcoming hair growth stimulant I'm most excited about. I'm much more excited about TDM105795 and S cube 3 even though the latter treatment hasn't had any new research in a good while now. And I know a lot of people are asking me, please do an update video on S cube 3 Believe me, I'm just as frustrated as you guys, and I promise you I will do so as soon as possible. But in the meantime, check out my videos on both those treatments that I'll link below. But anyways, PP405, it is still interesting enough that it is worth keeping an eye on, and I just hope we get some longer-term follow-up research in the near future. So hopefully this video will generate some lasting interest in this treatment, but if not, that's okay, because there are still plenty of other exciting treatments on the horizon, and you can all rest assured that you will be able to find a breakdown on all the latest scientific research here at the Hair Cafe Institute of Scientific Research. Thank you for watching Hair Loss Switchers. God bless.